Good afternoon, welcome to our homestead. Today we are gonna to talk about how to connect a charge verter to a new EG4 PowerPro indoor wall mount battery. There's a few small things that you need to pay attention to when connecting these, so let's talk about it. Okay, first I need to do a shout out for this 12,000 XP inverter. Can you hear anything? I can't. These fans are super quiet, the unit is super quiet, it's currently charging these batteries at 52 amps, and there's hardly any noise at all. So if you are unfamiliar with it, this is the new Chargeverter GC, which stands for Generator Control. It comes with a special dry contact cable, which can connect directly to your auto start on your generator. Additionally, the GC has the ability to communicate with all EG4 batteries via this communications cables, and it utilizes state of charge for the readings. It can also sense voltage, but this old one could only sense voltage. Now you can see also on the charge verter GC, there are no cables currently connected into it. And that's because all of them are quick connect. So instead of leaving these hanging on the wall, like the old charge verter, you can disconnect them and store them away. So here is the big issue when connecting your charge verter to your new indoor power pro batteries. And that is they have two different size connectors. These are both Amphenol connectors, but this one has a cable size of two aught, and this one is only two gauge. So these are not interchangeable, and you cannot buy the extra connectors and connect them to this cable. I've seen some people take a ring terminal and put it on the end of the large cable and connect them together with a bolt. Please don't do that. What you want to do is connect them both to a bus bar. This is a Pike Industries 600 volt bus bar. It is super beefy and it will get the job done every time. So what I'm gonna be doing is mounting these bus bars up on the wall and then crimping on a brand new two aught lug on the end of one of these cables. I'll throw on some heat shrink and we should be good to go. And here's the really nice thing. You do not need to buy any extra battery cable. All you need to do is get some extra lugs. And that's because each PowerPro battery comes with two sets of two aught battery cable. And that's so it can connect to things like the 12,000 XP or the 18 KPV. And if you only have one inverter like I do, which is the 12,000 XP currently running, then you have a lot of extra cable left over. Look at all of these, and I have even more in the other room. So I'm gonna take one set of the cables and crimp on some new lugs on the ends. That will also be useful for the future if I wanna switch back to my 6,000 XPs because battery cables connect to the 6,000 XPs via a lug and a bolt. We do this the manual way because this is just way cheaper to buy one of these crimping tools for a job that we don't do that often. So all you need is a hammer and one of these. I'll leave these in the description below the video as well. What we're gonna do is slip off the insulation on the end and we're gonna feed this in very carefully because this is fine stranded wire. We're gonna get this in this lug. Once our lug is in the end of the wire, we're gonna put it in our crimper. Let's get it seated in there properly. We're gonna hit it several times with this hammer. Make sure you've got a hard surface below it like this weight. There we go, and now we can put on our heat shrink. Let's get this other one done and then connect everything on the wall. Now we just have to find a good place for these things. Make sure you've got your cable in your box and in the area where it needs to be attached because these are kind of short. So you're not gonna be going very far with these particular battery cables. I decided to take the other charge verter off the wall just so I can give myself the best possible layout for these bus bars. We're gonna plug our comms cable into the RS-485 port on the charge verter, and then down into the same port in that middle battery. Plug our charging cables into the side of the charge verter. Orange to orange and black to black. Then of course, attach our positives from the charge verter and a positive from our middle battery onto our bus bar. Tighten them down, do the negatives the same, and you're all connected. Now we can connect our battery cables to the open terminals on the middle battery. Just click them down into place. 
like that. And we've got our communications cables in the RS-485 port. Button everything up and you're ready to start charging. There we go friends, it's that simple. We will be using our other charge verter in the future and putting it back up on the wall, but we will have to wire it differently to be able to use it. It will still connect to the bus bars, but we need to wire the inlet differently. We will also be doing more videos on how these batteries are performing and whether we like them more than the old server rack style batteries. Make sure you stick around on the channel by subscribing and clicking notifications so you can see those videos in the future. You can leave me a comment in the comment section below, or you can also email us at the channel email address if you have any questions. Now go check out this video right here, which is the full installation video on the 12,000 XP. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.